Hey guys, today I want to outline for you the five reasons why I would 100% leave the Catholic Church and the only reason that I don't. Welcome to Rise Up Jerusalem. If you're new here, hi, welcome. Enjoy the show. I'm Connor. I'm kind of crazy, but I talk about Catholic stuff in relation to the world. And today I want to talk about why the Catholic Church is kind of losing me. There are more reasons than five, but five is a good, nice list. It looks nice on the thumbnail. So for the purpose of this video, there are five reasons why I would leave the Catholic Church. The first reason is that the Catholic Church is always asking for things. They're never trying to give. Like whenever you hear announcements next time in mass, next time we're allowed to go back to mass, listen to the announcements. Announcement is always like, we need help for this. We need help for that. We need more people coming to Eucharistic Adoration. We need more people helping with ministries. We need this. We need that. Instead of just giving. It's an effectively proven model that if you just give, people will want to give back. Instead, the Catholic Church has fallen into this lull of just saying, we're going to ask people and the same 10 people will help. The church needs to focus more on giving. And let me tell you, the constant asking of like, we need help. We need help. We need help. It makes the church feel like it's failing and falling apart and that all they want me for is a warm body to hand Eucharist into somebody's mouth or hand. Like it's, it's unfortunate that it makes me feel like I'm only wanted for a collection basket and a warm body. I'm not wanted and I'm not being ministered to. No one's giving. And I don't, that's not like my personal experience. I think that's a major problem for every Catholic church, just based on the fact that they never say, let's us give you something. The words they use is Please come help us. Number two is that people are uh, are sometimes way too into the Catholic Church. Now I'm not calling anyone out, charismatic or traditional, both of y'all are crazy. If you're to the extreme of the Catholic Church, uh, you're kind of insane. Like, I don't wanna be mean or anything. There are good people on both sides. People who have charismatic leanings who are beautiful. People who have traditional meanings who are beautiful. There are people who have both, and those people are saints. The people I'm talking about are those who go over the top about it where everything becomes about avoiding sin. Everything becomes about growing in virtue. And it's not just like, yo, bro, live your life. Like these are the people who ask questions like, what would Thomas Aquinas think about Wonder Woman? Who cares? Like that's a fun conversation to have, but that's the only conversation they have sometimes is on what do you think? How does this apply to being Catholic? Like I understand wanting to talk about things in relation to Catholicism. It's a cool concept. It's great. It's a lot of fun. But don't do it all the time. Like, if your only conversation topic is like, hey, did you guys read the uh, Summa Theologica? It's like, yes, we have read it, Tom. We've already read it. We know what you're about to talk about. It's not a big controversial opinion. We've talked about it in class, and you decided to take it too far. Did you guys see this? There was a petition out the other day of like, we need a retake and basically say, screw you to the USCCB entirely and just start opening up all the Catholic churches and mosques. It's like, uh, what? Like, I understand I wanted to have Jesus back and the use of CCB is a bloated, absolutely outdated, awful organization that doesn't know what they're doing. Like, can someone please fill me in on why the USCCB is run so poorly? Side note, I called them the other day trying to get some information on something and they said, you need to submit this. I said, cool, what's a good email? And they gave me a fax number. And I said, can I... Can I, can I just email a PDF? And I kid you not, the woman goes, no, we don't have the ability to do that. It's 2020! How do you not have the ability to email a PDF? That's the most simple concept in the world. You can do that in 2003. How can you not do it? Whoever that beautiful, nice woman was, I'm 90% sure her name was Edna. Take away her typewriter and give her a laptop. Please let her come into the 21st century. Welcome her with open arms. But no, people who are over the top about it. It's the same with the people who are like, let's go to burn every Planned Parenthood. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, no, let's not do that. I hate abortion as much as the next guy. I hate this as much as the next guy, uh, but please don't do that. Like you're a little bit too into the faith. Like you're kind of losing sight of what actually the faith is about because you're getting so caught up in the nitty gritty and the rules and the regulations of it or into like the heady concepts that you're losing sight of what the Catholic Church is actually about. That's why you'll force me to leave. The other side of that is people who don't care about the Catholic Church, the hypocrites who only go to mass because their grandmother is Latino or Irish or Italian. And they know that if they don't continually go to mass, their grandmother not only will write them out of the will, but will beat them. We all know people like that who are only going to church because that's how it is. That's how we do it in this family. And when they come back home from college, they go to mass like, yeah, mom going to mass. Oh, how's the priest? Oh, it's great. His homilies are fantastic. 
they're not going to church. Like if you want to be, and adults like this are even worse. They're like, oh, I'd rather sleep in than go to mass on Sunday. It's like, okay, uh, leave the church. Like you're considering that the church is like some just thing you go to. No, the church is being Catholic is a lifestyle choice. If you don't want to be Catholic and live as a Catholic, uh, don't be Catholic. No one's forcing you to stay. Try being a hypocrite in like the vegan community. They'll throw you in a meat grinder. If you don't want to be Catholic, leave. Baptist churches are much nicer and have better coffee. You can drink it during the service. My number four reason is the politicking that goes in the Catholic church. Like if you've ever been involved in church ministry, you know that it's worse than Washington DC. Like there is always the one church lady who runs everything and if she doesn't like something, it's never gonna get done. Like the politics in the church, like, it's like you have a plan to do, oh, hey, I want to bring forward this great plan. And they're like, mm, no, we just don't do that here. It's like, this will help all of your parishioners. This is a fan, we're doing it for free. All you have to do is give us a time and date and a location. Like, no, we, we, we just don't do that here. This isn't something that we feel is in line with our church mission. Oh, really? Well, what is your church mission? Please give to the donation basket. It's the worst, the politicking. And then the politicking leads into another issue that I have. This is a bonus issue, is that the church isn't actually ministering to people. Like my church back home in Virginia has 75 ministries. And I can tell you how many of those are redundant and how many of those don't need to be set up as actual ministries. And it's about 74 of them. The only ministries that actually are essential in a Catholic church is a men's ministry, a women's ministry, a youth ministry, a religious education and sacramental prep ministry, and then stuff for the internal workings of the church so it can operate well. It's kind of like with how sexuality is seen now. We gotta have a ministry for however someone feels. It's like the Knights of Columbus uh, for a single dad's who are middle class and suffering from arthritis is putting on a potluck. We don't need that. You only need one organization for each group. You don't need to be, have it separated. And I have a problem as well, by the way, side note, this is a whole nother episode with dividing the church into separate organizations where it's like, look, here's the Latino Catholics. Here's the black Catholics. Here's these Catholics. Like we don't need that. We're all Catholic. Let's bring all of our cool parts together and mash them. And that's the Catholic church. We don't need to have, well, here's the, uh, event that is uh, primarily associated at this one minority or majority of the church that we need to. No, it's Catholic. Just bring everyone around together. And some people try to do that, but they, it goes back into politicking. Like the Knights of Columbus is a fantastic idea, but it's just a boys club of politicking. If you go, like they, tr they do like their pity roll drives and they try to help people. But for the most part, it's just politics. And I'm a card carrying second degree member of the Knights of Columbus. It's just unfortunate that that's really the way the Catholic churches are working, that it's politicking and they don't actually, you know, help anyone. It sucks because the Catholic church's legacy is like building hospitals and school systems and setting all of that up. We're kind of baller, but now we're starting to be into like, do we host the potluck on Tuesday? Because that may interfere with the knitting group. And now the number five reason is that the Catholic church refuses to admit that it is wrong. Now, the number one key value proposition of the Catholic Church is that it really is based on truth. It holds the fullness of all of Christianity. Like, if you're another side of Christianity, cool, you don't have all of it, though. Sorry, man. But the Catholic Church just doesn't talk about it when things go wrong. The biggest example of this being the abuse scandal that happened a few years ago. Does anyone actually know what happened with that? Like, what's the process? They set it up. I think they put it in a big document that nobody can read, like they always do. And they just said, hey, here's what's going on. We're just going to do stuff. And then nothing. Like, McCarrick was a very bad man. And... I, to the best of my knowledge, he didn't like get chastised. He just straight up quit and they let him leave. Like they didn't even chastise him or like say, oh, they've been, I mean, he was found guilty of groping seminarians. But then people try to talk about that and the Catholic church is like, mm, we don't talk about the bad parts of us. We only talk about the good things. Did you know Jesus loves you? And that Thomas Aquinas says this. And then people who try to keep others informed, like this priest in Virginia who has been, who was actually ordained by McCarrick, uh, who was talking, wrote a blog about that and other things. The bishop is trying to censor him and tell him, no, you're not allowed to do that. I have a whole video about that, breaking down the canon law. It's really interesting. It's like the juiciest church gossip ever. It's hilarious. I just complained about politicking now. I'm like, I would absolutely love if we had a gossip column for the Catholic Church. Like, oh, I am. Gosh. Even as a bit, I will not take the Lord's name in vain. That's where the line is crossed with this channel. So yeah, that was the last reason that the Catholic Church just doesn't focus on the problems where it's wrong and address and say, yeah, we're wrong. We're going to do better. Here's what we're doing and keep people informed about it. It's just like, we're going to sweep this under the rug. This, this never so I am obviously not a fan of the Catholic Church. There is many things wrong, but why don't I leave? There's only one main reason that I do not leave and why I will never leave. And it's that the Catholic Church 
Lord, where else am I supposed to go? It's only the words of St. Peter after Christ told everyone, hey, drink, eat my body, drink my blood. And everybody was like, oh, this is hard. I'm going to leave now. And St. Peter was like, uh, Lord, what's up? And Jesus was like, do you want to leave too? And Peter was like, where do you want me to go, dude? Like there's no other place. That is the fullness of truth, the fullness of life, the fullness of beauty where I can be restored week after week in the Lord. And yes, there is great merit in services in the Baptist, Presbyterian, non-denominational, et cetera, communities but none of them have the fullness of truth of the faith. Like where else am I supposed, if I left the Catholic church, I would have to be an atheist because the only way that I could accept in myself that it would be acceptable to leave the source of all truth and all life that the son of God, who is also God set up is if I just said that God doesn't exist. Like that's the only reason I could justify it. And obviously I'm not gonna become an atheist because, uh. That's terrifying, thinking that all of my life doesn't matter and that there's no divine plan. That's scary. So that's the reason I'm never gonna leave because the Catholic Church is incredibly important. Also, I feel it's kind of my duty that when the ship is sinking, you don't just jump off and swim for shore. You kind of try to help the ship. Stay afloat? I almost said stay alive. Well, yeah, kind of. The Catholic Church is meant to be a living body, actually. I'm going to go with this analogy. I screwed up, but I'm going to keep going. The Catholic Church is a living body. We're meant to be this overall arching, like, big group of people who are all joined together and doing one living thing. Uh... Let's keep that body alive, please. Let's keep it all working. That's why I do all of this is because I want to see the Catholic Church flourish. That's why I have problems with everything. And those are my top five reasons why I would leave the Catholic Church and the number one reason why I never will. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or thoughts on any of these, if you had anything that I didn't assign tangent on that you want me to do a topic on or anything about that, put it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to wash your hands. And remember, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, rise up and live. Thank <laughs> you.